Tonight's reading comes from the New Testament, Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 35. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me. I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded, but his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Here ends tonight's reading. We are, where is our camera? Where am I looking? There I am. Hello, everyone. We are so glad that you guys are joining us tonight. And we just want to say a special thank you to Jenna for doing our Bible reading tonight. You did awesome, girl. Thank you so much. We love you. Um, so tonight, we are finishing out our series called Canceled. And tonight, we're talking about canceling the debt. The debt that people owe us when they do something wrong to us. Um, and so I just thought, this is a big topic. It's a huge theme in our faith. And so I just wanted to bring some friends up to have a conversation about forgiveness. And so we're just going to walk through that together. Uh, we've got Pastor Nick here. What's up, everybody? And we've got Amber Dismute. Hey, everyone. And we've got Luke Barry. Hello, friends. Yeah, so we're so glad to have you all. And uh, you guys, let's just get started. Um, so I... I've got a couple questions for us. And the first one is, why do you think it's so hard for us to forgive someone? Or here's another way to say it. Um, what keeps us from forgiving somebody? So why is it so hard to forgive someone? And what keeps us from forgiving somebody? I, I think that uh, forgiveness is, is so hard because um, you, you know how when someone does you wrong, it, it feels like, like, well, they owe me something. You know what I mean? Like the, the, there has to be some sort of retribution, some sort of justice to, to make it right. And um, so I, I know whether it's big or whether it's small, whether it's someone that I know or someone that I don't know, I always feel like, uh, like you know, if, if someone has done something wrong to you, but you maybe have done, been a part of the problem too, but they did more wrong stuff, so therefore they should be the one to apologize first. You know, I'm talking about, am I the only one? Does anyone else nope. hear oh, do no, that? Oh, no, I yeah. get that. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad that I'm, I'm not the only one. That's, that's good. Uh, and so I, I think that sometimes we just feel like people owe us something. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we don't get that thing from them, then, well, we just aren't going to, we aren't going to, you know, have any sort of reconciliation, any sort of forgiveness. Uh, and, and that's hugely problematic for, for a ton of reasons. Um, because it, it's something that holds us back. Um, so I, I think one of the reasons, uh, kind of in some, uh, is that we feel like they, they still owe us. They haven't done what they need to do for us to forgive them. Uh, so once they do that, then we will. Uh, and uh, there's all sorts of issues with that. So that, that's one reason that I struggle with that. I don't know, what, what do you guys think? Yeah, I, I want to piggyback off of that, of like um, the idea of indebtedness to like, the person who hurts you, like they owe you, um, like that can really get into you and to the point where like forgiveness costs you something. Um, you have to let go of the harm that you did and that's all work that you have to do. It's not work that the person who hurts you has to do. So it's painful and it's di it can be difficult. Um, which isn't fair, right? Which isn't yes. fair because yeah. if you're the victim, right, like how can you, 
how can you say that that's just, but still you need to forgive, right? Um, so it's a lot of work, and so it can be difficult to do because of that work, and it's easier to just push it down, keep the anger, avoid, 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 until you forget about it, but then it might come back again, who knows? Right? Yeah, because that, that's, that's like fake forgiveness. Yeah, it's fake forgiveness. Yeah. I like what you said there, Luke, because I see it as, again, like almost like opening a wound. It's like, in order to forgive someone, you need to know exactly what it is you're forgiving, and you have to really like search for that reason. And, um, and sometimes that's really painful to like actually go back to that moment, or like that word that they said to you, or that, like whatever they did to you, and just have to like reopen that and face it, and then be able to like heal from that is just, it's difficult. Yeah. It's almost easier to pretend like you were never hurt than to actually forgive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It seems super unfair that you have to do all the work and the other person has to do nothing. Um, I thought of a few things and I thought of pride, pain, and fear. Um, pride, we're just acting like someone didn't do something or that they don't deserve to be forgiven, so why, why would I do that? Like, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I think pain, we think that um, we're holding on to this pain and it's, it's a lot and we, we wanna let it go but we just, we don't know how. And we've been so hurt that we're like, they don't deserve to be forgiven, so I'm, I'm not going to do it. And then I think fear, especially if uh, the person has, you're still in relationship with them, like if it's a parent or a friend or someone you're still in relationship with, your fear is that they're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And that you, you um, think maybe they think I'm a doormat and that they can do it again. And that's not the reality of, of forgiving someone. Um, but I think it's really hard because gosh, we're, we, we're easily offended and, and we get hurt easy and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's real. Well, and, and to be fair, some people are hurt um, to a greater degree than others, right? Mm -hmm. Like th there's some hurts that people have that are massive right. uh, and just uh, a massive betrayal or just like the, the kind of stuff that, that really you're gonna need to, not like, oh, wouldn't it be nice, but you're gonna need to experience um, some professional counseling and help uh, and God working through that uh, in order to get the damage that was done um, uh, to get healing for that. And so uh, there's some hurts that are just really, really deep. I think that, that those can be really tough. Um, I've, had, uh, I've had people that I've talked to that, um, like, I, I don't really know if I can forgive the person that assaulted me. I don't really know if I can forgive the person that abused me. I don't really know if I can forgive, uh, fill in the blank. Uh, and I don't really know if I want to be around a God that would forgive that person. Mm. Uh, and, and those are all just really real and raw emotions because the, the wound is so painful, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I, th I think that, I mean, it's kind of the blend of what the two of you were saying yeah. is that sometimes the wound is so bad. Uh, but if I'm being honest in my own life, sometimes I don't forgive things that are not that big, <laughs> you know, uh, they're not even close to that big, uh, yeah, I was but I can't let it go. Piggyback off that, I think that um, what keeps us from forgiving is sometimes we, and I'm guilty of this, which is why I'm going to say it, <laughs> I am a perfectionist, and so sometimes I don't recognize when I have done something um, and that I've... I'm not a perfect Christian, but sometimes I feel like I am, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and then I'm like, please laugh at me because it's so ridiculous. But sometimes I feel like, well, I haven't done anything as bad as that person. And so mm. I, why, why would I forgive them? Because I haven't sinned enough in my mind, I think, that to where I've experienced that true forgiveness from God and, and to understand, like, God forgave me. I, if, if you experience forgiveness from God and the, the horrible things that you've done or I yes absolutely I'm just thinking of some of the things I've done and I'm like God has forgiven me like once you're able to receive that I think you can give it to other people but if you don't truly receive or you think you're a perfect Christian or that you haven't done um you haven't done anything wrong I think it's harder to forgive someone yeah. I remember for me uh for years in uh in high school um and I've, I've told the story of my dramatic high school relationships, romantic relationships uh, uh, around Ignition before. And so if you've been around, you've heard a few of them. Uh, and one of them, uh, there was this guy that he, um, uh, well, there was this girl that I was dating, 
but it turned out she was also dating this other guy from another school. And yeah, I know. <gasps> oh my God. I know, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's like, is, are we at church or is this, uh, you know, whatever, fill in the blank show. I'm but uh, so Luke's stressed. <laughs> uh, and for so long, uh, even years after uh, this guy and, and I uh, had both moved on from that girl, um, we just hated each other. We couldn't forgive each other. And uh, we'd like randomly have like, I don't even know why we had each other's numbers, but we'd randomly have each other's numbers and, and uh, text and say, look, I heard the sermon on forgiveness and I just had to text you and say, I forgive you. And then like uh, a couple of years later, I just had to forgive you again. Uh, and I'm, for I'm, just, I'm forgiving you again, okay? And, uh, and at the end of the day, really neither one of us were hurting each other. It was actually the, the girl that we both needed to forgive, but we were blaming the wrong person. So sometimes I think that we, we actually need to be freed and set free, uh, not even from the person that hurt us, we're mistaken about where the pain is actually coming from or where the blame is to be placed or, or those types of things. And, uh, and I think that sometimes forgiveness is hard because you don't know who you really need to forgive. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes you got to forgive yourself, for example. I think unforgiveness can be passed down. Yeah, for like sure. Like in families, have you all ever seen that? Yeah, I mean, I experienced that within my own family, uh, just various things that have happened. And uh, I remember like when I was a kid, like my grandparents didn't really have a lot to do with me and that was super painful. And I remember like, just being like, I, I don't even know how to approach my grandparents and like talk with them about it because I was just like a little kid. Um, but before my grandmother passed when I was in high school, uh, she actually sent me this letter and apologized for like everything, like not like spending time with me as a kid, like not affirming me in things. And it was like a really sweet moment, but it was like, like that passed down because like she didn't really have a relationship with like family members from before. And then I know like my family struggled with my grandparents for years. And it was just like this constant thing of like, like we're just not wanted by them. Um, and I think part of it was passed down because like my parents were so hurt mm -hmm. too, you know? But it was like, it was cool. And like in the end, like how, I mean, I got the letter and I, I still have it. I actually just found it this week. Wow. And I was rereading through it yeah. again. And I was like, wow, like I remember getting this letter and I just like cried. It was just so powerful. Um, but yeah, like I think that totally passes down. Or even other things that are just like random, like family wars, almost like Romeo and Juliet, except for <laughs> modern day, you know? Yeah, like we don't talk the to this side of the family. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Yep. Yeah. 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 So uh, when you got that letter, I'm just wondering, because uh, I've never heard that story before. Um, like for you, was it like, I got the letter, I got this apology, boom, everything's better? Or was it like more of a process still? It was still a process. It was, um, yeah, I feel like it kind of just had to like sink in. And I remember just like, I still remember the feeling because when I read the letter over this like last weekend when I found it, I remember like that same feeling just kind of like washing over me of like almost like, this like anger that I had felt like kind of melting away, but it had to take its time. And I did end up calling my grandmother a few days after I got the letter and I was just like, thank you. And I think that call uh, meant more to me even than the letter, because we actually got to like talk through what happened. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just really meaningful, but I think it definitely took some time. Like now, like I remember I was so grateful that it happened before she passed. I think she sent the letter maybe two years before she passed away. So like those last two years, we like spent a lot of time on the phone together and that was really cool. And it was like almost like that time we had together like helped rebuild this relationship that I had been like yearning for my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it ended really sweet. But yeah, it just took some time. I, I heard someone say once that um, if we don't allow God to transform something mm -hmm. in our life that's broken, like a relationship with, with your grandma, then it's really easy for that pain to transfer into the next generation. Mm -hmm. uh, or another way of saying that is, is if you don't allow God to heal uh, the wound, then it's very likely that it will happen again. Uh, and so there's, uh, whether that's in your life or whether that's in the life of your kids, and, and 
Uh, I know so many teenagers that say, when I'm a parent, I'm not going to be like my dad. I'm not going to be like my mom. And then they grow up and they become parents. They're like, oh, my goodness, I am my mother. <laughs> I am my father. Like, it's, it's, it's awful. I know so many parents like that. And guess what they all said when they were teenagers? I'm not going to be like my dad. I'm not going to be like my mom. And there's yeah. just, this, it's just this weird principle of life. And, and I think that it really comes down to um, have you allowed God's healing power of forgiveness into that, that area of life? so much so that you're willing to have that awkward conversation or that letter or that phone call or, or whatever, it, whatever it might be. I think it's so healing, though. Like, was our Bible reading Matthew 18? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Matthew 18. Yep. It's, yep. I mean, that's just what we even have here. If we have an issue with each other, God cares more about the relationships that we have with people. Um, and I think there's so much to be said about that. I think it's because it allows us to heal when we... When we confront the situation when we have uncomfortable conversations and it also allows to like how many of you have that voice in your head where it's like I bet they're thinking this about me but really they're not yeah. <laughs> and then yes. you had the conversation and you're like they never thought that at all like mm -hmm. I'm glad I cleared that up yeah I think about that a lot I've like actually said that to people like, <coughs> I feel like you feel this about me or you think this way about me and then they're like, what? <laughs> like, that is so out of left field. That's not even true. And I'm like, dang it. The devil got in my head again. What? And uh, it's so, like, that's why I think Matthew 18 is so important in most situations. I don't think that it's necessary in all situations. But I think it's good because it's like you get what's on your heart out there. And you're, like, keeping yourself and them accountable. Yeah. Um, and it also clears up so much. Yeah, and so, and this is like a staff policy for us. It, mm -hmm. the, and um, yeah, it, when you say, like, not in every situation, I, I think what, what uh, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm you hearing go you right. I know you what, know. what you're saying is, like, it doesn't make sense if you, like, one of those extreme examples for, yeah. uh, that I was talking about earlier, like, for you to go to your abuser one-on-one uh, -on -one and say, hey, you know when you abuse me, that's, that's wrong. You should just like get out of that relationship. You don't need to like go have a one-on-one -on -one sit down with coffee or something. That's not appropriate. Um, but the kind of the three steps in Matthew 18, it's to go directly to that person mm -hmm. to say, hey, there's, there's something that's off here. Hey, this was a sin against me. Uh, and if that person won't listen and won't be reconciled, the second step in Matthew 18 is to uh, bring a couple people along. Uh, so that there's some community, uh, a loving community, not judgmental, but loving community that, that uh, can hopefully help that person see, uh, see what's going on. And then Jesus says something so interesting in the last one. He says, um, and uh, if, if they don't do that, bring them before the church. Uh, so bring them before the whole community of God. And if they're like, I, I just can't agree with you. I just still think that I'm in the right for what I did. Then at that point, you treat them like a, 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 he says, a corrupt tax collector, uh, which it's so interesting because Jesus, he hung out with corrupt tax collectors. Like <laughs> those were the people that he hung out with. So I'm like, Jesus, what, what do you mean? Like you really seem to love corrupt tax collectors. And Jesus is like, yeah, uh, love them still. But that doesn't mean that you need to just let them have this, this place in, in the community. You can create some, some more space because yeah. uh, you've, you've done the necessary steps instead of creating some sort of gossip army uh, on your side or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just think, just adding off of that, I just think it's so important, like, to remember, like, not to go back to something toxic. Like, I've made that mistake so many times where I'm like, I need to go confront this person, but then I get, like, caught up in this, like, toxic relationship where it's like, you know what, I just need to forgive them and let that go. And so, like, now I've, like, learned that that's what's necessary uh, for me in those situations, but, like, you know, other things, like, you know, like if Amber and I had something going on, like I could totally go and talk to her about it or vice versa or like, but just with the toxic people that are like hurting you or harming you, like just remember like you can do that on your own. Um, and yeah, I don't know if anyone wants to add yeah, on to that. The, the toxic thing, like if you're with a, uh, in a relationship with a non-toxic person, the hardest conversation to go and say, hey, this didn't go well is the first one. And they get easier and easier and easier because they, they respond well. Toxic people, they get harder and harder and harder mm -hmm. because, uh, because, well, it's toxic. Uh, and so, so yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. I, I, like, totally just thought of that right there. I feel, like, really good about it. I'm going to write it down uh, and I remember it for it later. Down. So you, a, you inspired me. The Holy Spirit inspired me. Oh, you. great. So, I have a quick question. Do you think it's harder to forgive yourself or someone else? Oh. Self. 
myself. For sure. For I me. think someone else because I don't think I did anything wrong. So you're like me, the perfectionist <laughs> yeah. that thinks you've yeah. done nothing wrong. <laughs> but that's a lie, obviously. So maybe obviously. myself when it comes down to it. Um, I, I tend to accept more my general adding to the harm of the world. This, this is going to sound silly. But like, as a person, you live and you, you accidentally hurt. That's the nature of sin. That's the nature of who we are. Like, we cause pain we don't even know about, right? Uh, because words are very powerful things. And we tend to be rather haphazard with them. Uh, we tend to use them all like that. And so I guess it's, I find it harder to forgive myself because of that, because it's like, well, what did I do wrong, right? It's like a general sense of I know I messed up. But yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and sometimes you're not even aware. Yeah, because you, know, like, you can just totally miss. It. You can ruin someone's day and not even know. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying to me. So, <laughs> like, it is. It should be terrifying. Like, not. It shouldn't paralyze us, but we should. I get it. We should be considerate of it. Yeah. One time, one of my friends came to me, and she did the Matthew 18 thing, and I had no idea that I hurt her. And when I found out, I was heartbroken. Like. I, I mean, I immediately started crying because I was like, oh my word, I hurt this person so bad and they'd been holding it in for so long and they finally shared and I was just like, I was so relieved that they told me because honestly, I, I just want to know, like, I want to know if I've hurt someone because I want to make it right. Um, but I was also just so heartbroken by that. Uh, has that anything like that well, happened to you Well, but that, that's a, a good point too because if someone has hurt you or if someone's hurt me, sometimes I'm like, look, I'm going to be the bigger person, <laughs> and I'm not going to talk to him. And sometimes that's the right <laughs> move. Uh, but usually that just means I'm going to get bitter towards him mm -hmm. uh, and not resolve anything. So instead of like actually dealing with the problem, I'm just going to uh, think that I'm a bigger person, which creates self-righteousness, judgmentalism, and all sorts of things. Uh, and then uh, not actually do anything about what went wrong, which means it's going to happen again. And uh, to what you were just saying, it made me realize, like, oh, if someone's hurt me, they might, if they love me, they actually want to know that they hurt mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And, uh, and I might even think they did it on purpose or that they should have known. That's the thing. I, I always think, well, you should, if you love me, you should know me. Uh, well, that's not how relationships work. Yeah. That's just not, not reality. Communication's uh, key. What'd you say? Communication's key. Communication. Yeah, is humans key. Are That's what my degree is in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Uh, okay, so the next question I have for us is how? How do we forgive? Because, again, like, forgiveness is such a huge theme um, in our faith, and it talks about it all the time in the Bible. I was actually just, like, looking up verses this week and was just like, okay, let me just like see what are our three steps, like how do we forgive? And I found this great article that had 20 verses. I'm not gonna read them all to you, but I'm gonna read a few to you guys. So Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Then Matthew 6.14, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Colossians 3.13, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And they go on and on and on and on, just saying, forgive, forgive, forgive. But I'm not seeing a lot of like these like three steps or like the formula, the template to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so like that can be really frustrating when you're like, okay, the Bible's constantly telling me to forgive, but how do I do it? So I thought, let's just chat about that for a minute, you know? See what the pastor thinks. Why are you picking on me? Because you're the pastor. So? you got a degree. Because <laughs> I got a degree. <laughs> Give me a break. We'll pick um, on everyone. Don't worry. You're not, ex you're not just... Okay. Excited. Well, uh, I, I think, the, like, the theme is I heard just even those verses. Or, or the Bible reading from tonight from Matthew 18. Because uh, Jesus does give, like, this, this three steps towards what's called reconciliation. Reconciliation is where uh, two people that were once a, the, a council... Uh, they were together, meeting together. Now they're not a council. They're not together. And now we're re-counseling. Okay, so it, it's, it's like they're coming back together. That's an amending of the relationship, right? So forgiveness is involved with that, but forgiveness is a little bit different. See, forgiveness is um, the, re the responsibility of the person that's hurt. So if you've been sinned against, forgiveness is your job. Uh, reconciliation is the job of both the offender and the person who's hurt. Uh, and they come together and need to, you know, in a 
good way resolve things, uh, and whether it's compromising or having a conversation or, or whatever it might be. Uh, and then there's building trust. And building trust is totally different. Uh, to that is entirely on the person who uh, has offended somebody, uh, to build trust. And uh, that usually takes time, uh, and that should probably be like communicated when reconciliation happens. But here's the thing, not uh, all relationships call for reconciliation to now we're best buds, uh, or now I want you to build enough trust with me to be best buds. It, it's, it's not, that's not necessary in every circumstance. But when it comes to something like your, your, your parents, you know, or, or you know, your church, or um, uh, whatever, whatever relationship, your kids someday, whatever it might be, uh, you're gonna have issues, you're gonna have struggles, and so keeping those three things separated kind of helps with that. Uh, and then in this parable that Jesus tells right after Matthew 18, uh, he's talking about this debtor who owes this, uh, this king millions of dollars, and he can't pay it back. There's no way for him to pay it back. Uh, and so what he does uh, when the king shows him grace and forgiveness is he goes to someone else who owes him a little bit of money. And he is aggressive and is not graceful, does not show forgiveness. Uh, and in doing so, he actually lost the grace and forgiveness from the king. Uh, and Jesus says, look, and this is a hard word, look, if you are not willing to forgive, then you're going to be missing out. You're going to be missing my forgiveness uh, because I died, Jesus would say, I died for you and I died for the person that hurt you too. Uh, and that's a hard word, especially if you've been hurt. Uh, if you've been hurt really bad, uh, I know that that's a really hard thing to hear. And so I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, I just want to acknowledge this, just like how uh, sometimes it's easy to get mad at God uh, about something like that. And he can take that, ha ha hash it out with him. But I, I think that uh, the how in forgiving, uh, the thing that this guy should have done has been like, oh, man, look at how much I've been forgiven. And then to the extent to which I've been forgiven. So I hear someone saying in my head uh, out there somewhere, maybe this is you, uh, I hear someone saying, well, um, I have never done something as bad as what that person did to me in my life to anybody. But here's the deal. To Jesus, uh, sin separates us from God, whether it's big or small. And it's not to minimize what happened to you. It's not to minimize uh, or maximize the small thing. But the reality is that it separates us from God. And so uh, when God sent his son to die on a cross, that was the cost of your small sin. I know you only have small sin. I only have small sin. You have only, <laughs> only have small sin. Uh, me too. I only have small sin because I'm a pastor and I have a degree. Uh, so yeah. therefore, <laughs> and that sanctifies. Yeah. That's not how it works in case you're wondering. Um, but Jesus paid the same price for the greatest sins in the world and the smallest sins in the world. And so when we treat others as though the price that Jesus paid isn't enough, then Jesus isn't okay with that. It's like saying, hey, thanks for dying on the cross for me. Uh, and uh, it's, it's massive. It's the biggest thing in the universe, except for this hurt. It's actually saying your hurt is bigger than the cross. But Jesus says, no, 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 we're not going to do that because my cross is bigger than the hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, you asked the pastor, and I gave a okay. little sermonette, so I'm cutting it off there, but I, I will okay. keep going. Let's ask the future pastor. Future pastor Luke. Future pastor Luke. a lot Luke. of pressure. I have to pass school. <laughs> okay. You'll yeah. be fine. More than um, fine. I think... Um, like, if we're looking for a process, um, I always think one of the best places to start with any conflict is to uh, see the humanity in another person. Mm. Um, that's something that's, especially with the internet now, uh, really easy for us to forget about, um, to see a person as a, uh, opponent, an opposing force, right? Um, something that just happened to you. Like, you're a victim of this natural disaster that is a human being, right? Um, and so the need for forgiveness isn't felt by you because you don't see them as a person. You see them as a, 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 yeah, a, a villain, a cause of your pain, like the same as a tornado would be, right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't feel like you need to forgive. Um, but when you start to see someone as a person, uh, 
you feel the need to forgive. You see their humanity. You at least feel the, the need to let go of that for your sake, uh, to not hold against something against someone till the day they die, um, because that's on you. That You're the only person feeling that, unless they're seeking reconciliation. And, and I know people that they have, uh, they're struggling to forgive someone who has died. Mm. Yeah. Like, the reconciliation ain't going to happen this side of heaven. Yeah. So, I think... Uh, that's a good place to start. I think it makes it easier. I don't know that it's always necessary to understand a person and be like, oh, I see why you hurt me. I see the weird contraptions of your mind that made you hurt me. Um, but I think it really helps to see someone as human because um, that's empathy. And empathy helps immensely when it comes to pain to feel someone else and be like, oh, I understand you. Um, I don't agree with you. I don't think you're right. In fact, I think you're wrong but I see that you're a person and that you have a thought process and that you exist, right? And that's a gift from you to that person, which seems counterintuitive uh, when you're the victim, but that's what our Lord did. Um, when the Romans were putting up on the cross, he asked God to forgive them, right? They don't know what they do. I think I'll be all right as a pastor. I think so too. Think <laughs> Amber, you were sharing with me this awesome prayer activity that you do sometimes yeah. um, in order to like, release someone yeah uh would you mind sharing what that is and actually just like walking us through that before we close tonight yeah so um i would love to walk you through it i just want to remind you a couple of things too like uh forgiveness is much like uh i think as a teenager i thought love was um a feeling <laughs> <laughs> and it's a choice now that i'm married i absolutely know it's a choice but forgiveness is too and I think um, yeah. daily you have to wake up and remind yourself that you have forgiven that person. And the only way, the reason I feel like the Bible doesn't say how to do it is because you have to do it with God. And you have to do it on your own, um, your own way, your own journey with him. And um, so, yeah, uh, this prayer activity I've done multiple times because, as I said, I'm a one. And so I have a hard time sometimes forgiving people, especially if I think I've done nothing wrong. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all of you watching. And if you want to participate as well, feel free. Um, I did this last week at Core Therapy. Love it. Uh, but I want you to close your eyes. So I'm going to close your eyes, get into a posture that's super comfortable. And I want you to uh, think of a person that you need to forgive. Now, Nick kind of talked about there are really small things that sometimes we need to find forgiveness for, and then there are super big things. And so if this person has hurt you immensely, I'm not saying that you're going to be able to do this right now. Maybe start with um, your neighbor who yelled at you for parking in the wrong <laughs> spot or something like that. Um, so I want you to close your eyes. I want you to picture your heart. And um, behind your heart is a cage or a jail cell. And in that jail cell is that person. And the only person that can let this person out of your heart is you. You hold the key to that, along with Jesus. So let's invite Jesus, um, let's invite Jesus into this with you. And as you get this key and you unlock it, I want you to say what that person did to you. Whether the person um, hurt you, whether the person cussed you out, whether the person betrayed you, whether um, they hurt you more than words can ever describe. I want you to say what they did. Let's acknowledge what they did. Let's do it in front of God. Let's do it in front of them as you're talking to them and just say, hey, I was hurt when you X, Y, Z. And after you do that, um, I want you to unlock that door and open it. And as you are allowing that person to walk out, I want you to look at them with Jesus. And I want you to say, I forgive you. And I want you to say that may God bless you. And I also want you to pray for that person in case they don't know Jesus. I want you to pray that God would show up in their lives and maybe even transform their heart so that the hurt that you experience that someone else doesn't have to experience again. And as that person, um, as that person leaves, I want you to take a deep breath in 
and just breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe in the forgiveness that God has freely given you that you have been able to give someone else. I'm gonna lead us in another prayer here just as we close. God, you are so good. Even when we think we've done nothing wrong, I pray you give us the eyes to see when we have. I pray that you give us a posture to be able to receive um, your forgiveness for us. See, it isn't until we've done something tremendously wrong that we feel like we need your forgiveness, but yet we need it every day. I know as I'm driving through traffic, I do. God, I pray that um, as we are able to receive your forgiveness and practice forgiveness, that it would come like second nature to us, that we would not allow people to stay caged in in our hearts. God, because it's only hurting us. It's like drinking poison and expecting that other person to die. God, I pray that as, um, as we go into this holiday, we may have some people in our family that we are going to see that we need to forgive. God, I pray that you give us the courage and the boldness and the wisdom and the discernment on if we should have this conversation or if we just need to forgive from a heart posture. God, I pray that as people are wondering, how do I do this, that you remind them that this is a journey. Forgiveness is the first step. Reconciliation is the second step, if it deems it. And finding trust is the third one. God, I think the most important thing is knowing um, that you are for us and that even though these bad things have happened to us, God, that you are with us. And we thank you so much for that. And we thank you for the ways in which you, um, the ways in which you show up when we're crying and we're extremely hurt and we're extremely sad and we feel like we can't go on anymore. You give us the strength to continue. And so I, I pray that whoever needs to hear that knows that if they feel um, extremely sad or they just feel like, I don't know if I can go on anymore. This life is extremely hard. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of COVID. I am tired of feeling trapped in. God, that you would remind them that their life is worth living, that you are not done with them, that they have breath in their lungs because you have so much more for them to do, so much more for them to say. God, that you want to use them in ways to glorify you, to bring your word and your promises to people that maybe have never experienced you. God, I pray for protection around each and every one of our students and everyone hearing this, this prayer right now. I pray that if anyone is struggling with mental health or COVID or, um, or unforgiveness, God, that you would um, place your healing hand upon them. I believe that finding forgiveness can free us from so many things. And I just pray that you give us the eyes to see it, the ears to hear it, and the courage to walk it out with you. We thank you so much. Um, I pray for each and every one of these leaders sitting here on the stage. I thank you so much uh, for the ways in which you are using them. I thank you for their friendship, their leadership, um, their heart to love these students. And... Um, and I just pray for their protection as well as we go into this holiday season. We love you so much, God. We're so grateful and thankful for you and your son who has died and canceled all of our debts. So we owe, um, we owe nothing. Thank you. It's in your holy name that we say and we pray.